Hello, everybody. Welcome to the big show. Jeremy Torres here coming at you from the beautiful Done Better Studios here. Bam. In Pompano Beach, Florida. Thanks for watching this show. Thanks for contributing. Yesterday, we had a great guest on, Carolyn Strauss. Thank you for participating. And everyone's feedback of that show is great. Even this morning, I've got a lot of people contacting me and telling me how great it was to see uh, Carolyn on the show, including some people that we had in, in common in our speaking business. And uh, she actually stayed last night. She got here at 2 o'clock and stayed all the way through after 9 o'clock for my live presentation skills uh, class with my speaking cohort. So thank you, Carolyn, for just everything that you do for me and uh, in this community. So today, talking about what people think of you. <laughs> when do they think of you? Why do they think of you? And what can we do to make people think of us when they see something that we do. <laughs> so that's often called a thought leader. Um, and, the, and the thought leader is the apex of the, the status quo of people thinking of us. When people think of what we do, when they see something that's in the world that needs a problem solved and they think of you, you have uh, probably reached a pretty high level of expertise. And today we're gonna go over what those levels are and I believe there are six levels that we've come up with. And then we're going to come up with 10 ways of becoming a thought leader, which is, again, the very top of the mountain in, uh, in that realm. And so kind of uh, been talking about this. This subject's come up a few times in the last few days is, is the reason I'm doing this show on that topic. Sometimes we just say, hey, Christian, how you doing, brother? Sometimes we just kind of pick a thing and go with it. Sometimes... We don't really understand what we're doing until the moment strikes me and <laughs> just say, let's go with that. But this has kind of been a common occurrence, common uh, conversation I've had the last couple of days is how do people identify us? And Christian, speaking of Christian, one of those conversations was with Christian, as a matter of fact, on the uh, Toastmaster speaking professional mastermind, uh, mid-month mastermind we had on Tuesday. It's, it's how are we walking in the world? Is or do we do we give out too many signals to too many people trying to be all things to everyone? Um, almost like that old saying: if you stand for if you don't stand for anything, you'll fall for anything, right? If you stand for nothing, you'll fall for anything. Well, if you stand for too many things, you're not going to resonate with anyone. And so, what we want to do, if we want to be thought of to solve a particular problem, is we've got to be that to everyone. How are we projecting ourselves? What's our brand? Are we flying the same colors? Are we using the same language? Are we showing up at the places that uh, that the people need help with the solution that we have for them? Are we giving freely of, of our solutions without expecting anything in return, especially at first? And are we open to receiving these thoughts? The law of not reciprocity, but recep uh, receptivity, as Bob Berg calls it in the go-giver. So without further ado, let's kind of just jump into some of these steps of becoming a thought leader and, 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 and what you have to go through, what levels there are, so you understand maybe where you are and where you what you have to do to get to the next level. And one of the things that, that kind of reminded me of this is that if you look right there, you will see a drum set that I personally have had for about, geez, maybe maybe 15 years or so. And it's my travel set. It's my gigging set. I think it's got chips and scrapes and knocks in it. But I've had a drum set since I was born, basically, uh, for except for a, a few years in my older teens when I didn't have a house. Um, I sold my drum set in high school. Boy, I regret that, man. That's another whole story for another show. But because I played my whole life, I get all sorts of videos on this contraption, text messages and, and shout outs and tags on every kind of conceivable type of drum situation. Grandma's playing drums and four year old playing drums and people building drum sets on their motorcycles. 
And every time I get that message from somebody, even though it's maybe the 40th time I got that message because it's so crazy, that's 40 people who thought about me when they thought about a drum set or a drum crazy, somebody playing with a crazy arm swinging. I'm thought of. That's flattering. It's, 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 it's what you want in life, to be thought of. And, in, and not that I'm the Gene Krupa or the, um, you know, Bonzo or, you know, the, what's the uh, one of the best drummers, insert name here, that's ever lived. But in the people's lives that I've touched that think of uh, a drumming when they see something, they think of me. And that's that's something that is awesome, but it don't pay the bills because <laughs> I'm not doing that for a living. I might get a couple hundred dollars a month if I'm gigging with a band, but it don't pay the bills. Uh, but that just comes from a lifetime of doing something. So how can I turn the lesson, though, of being that that thought leader into something that pays the bills? Are you a realtor like Christy? Flamingo Realty is, is Annie gave her. Annie Behan was here a few weeks ago. And she said, Christy, if I ever see you and you don't wear a Flamingo pin or a Flamingo shirt or a Flamingo on your something or other, you need to be Flamingo lady. When I When I think of... Real estate, I need to think of Flamingo. And so it's that brand, it's that, that introducing that thing you do over and over in everything that you do. Uh, for me, it's kind of a toss up between the, the platform here that I'm building for coaches and trying to solve this problem where people can go to when they need help with their body, their business, or their mind to find a world class coach and speaking about how to let people know about getting improving their mind, body, and business by overcoming self-limiting beliefs, by overcoming adversity, and by growing their businesses and getting business taken from them from larger companies and how to beat those market mammoths. You know, so there's always that struggle between am I a speaker or am I do I want to be known for what I'm speaking about? I mean, as a professional speaker, that is some quandary. And I'm fighting with that every day. And so one of the ways I learned to cope with that is by doing this, by looking up these things that that try to make it clear for me. And if, if I'm struggling, it maybe you are too. So let's get into what are the steps, the six steps to becoming a thought leader. And I'm not using a lot of theatrics today and a lot of a lot of uh, uh, gadgetry because of where I am. I've got the green screen down. This is just the, the bare bones office because we've got an event coming up here this Saturday that Christie's putting on. And so uh, there's no countdown, no big flashing numbers, no lightning strikes today. OK, just me talking and you following along and hopefully chatting along in the in the, in the chat here. So according to chat GPT, <laughs> there is six stages and the first stage is novice. And the novice means you're just getting started. It's something that you're not primarily focused on, but you've got an interest in it and you're learning about it and you're gaining new knowledge in that field. And at that point, you are novice. A lot of people uh, changing industries, for example, as I went from construction industry into the speaking industry, man, at first I was a novice. It sounded interesting. Being paid to get on stage sounded fun. <laughs> man, did I not know how much work it was. It was a lot, a lot of work. Um, so I'd love to know, speaking of these little things here, I'd love to know what, what, what is your, what is your thing? What, what, what people think of when they think of you, Christian, uh, content is good enough. Don't need no sticky graphic. Well, thank you very much. I love it. I love it. And thanks. We've got uh drummer boy. Yeah. My mama, she's put up with that drums a long time, many, many years. Uh, but uh, if you're starting off, are you a novice? As you delve into that feel a little more, maybe you become a little more interested. You might explore different aspects of it and develop a passion for a specific topic and, and start diving in a little deeper. And that's when you become the second level on your way to becoming a thought leader. That's when you are an enthusiast. You're an enthusiast at that point. That's the second level on your journey to becoming a thought leader. When you develop the passion for something, at that stage, you begin to actively contribute to that field, sharing insights and ideas and, and start building content toward it. This, is, uh, this means that you're becoming a contributor. 
So the third stage here on your way to thought leader is becoming a contributor. This could mean that you're writing blogs about things, you're posting about it, you've got websites uh, that you're you're starting to dive into and, and maybe offering your thoughts on them, uh, getting involved in discussions, perhaps putting together a presentation. Maybe that presentation shows your passion but also shows that you have limited knowledge. But as your knowledge grows, people might start to ask you about things because they've heard this a few times and they've seen it a few places. And so at that point, maybe you start influencing people. And so the fourth step here of becoming a thought leader is you becoming an influencer by gaining more experience, by building credibility, by having the consistency of doing something and doing it in a way that's maybe a little bit different than other people are doing it. Your opinions start to become sought after and your ideas become insights. And that's when you have achieved the influence influencer level. The next step, and this is step number five on, on out of six, so we're almost there already, is when you're influencing a group of people and you've established yourself as a trusted source of information, you transcend influencer and you become an authority. And this is a big deal when you become an authority because this means that you're an expert now in this field. You're often seen as the go-to person and you're invited to speak at conferences and write for more reputable websites and publications. This says as a professional speaker, the authoritative, figure is really a big one that's when you start having the comma and then two figures after that uh the authorities get paid the big bucks at that point when you've done it long enough and you've spoken to enough people and you've impacted enough lives that's when you become a thought leader at the thought leader a thought leader again you're at the top of the apex you're at the higher the, the top of the hierarchy the, the knowledge you have is so deep that you have innovative ideas and insights into this field that you've chosen. And you often shape the direction of the industry so widely that you are recognized and respected for your contributions at a level that you're not matched. So to recap, we start off as a novice. Secondly, we come, we become an enthusiast with our as our passion grows. As that happens, we start contributing, giving back information into that field. And that's when you're a contributor. When you contribute enough things, you start influencing people and you become an influencer. When you've influenced enough people, then you become an authority. And when your authority is recognized so widely, you have become then a thought leader. So how do we get there? What are the steps that we take to go through those six levels to become a thought leader. So I've got 10 quick steps we're going to run through that you need to put into practice every day to become a thought leader in your field. What in, 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 in the comments, if you'd like to put, where are you in your journey? Where are you on those six levels? Are you a novice? Are you uh, an enthusiast, a contributor, an influencer, authority figure, or a thought leader? I'd like to know where you are in your journey right now. And uh, Christian is contributing himself to putting uh, for and putting them in the, the comments. So thank you. And that's in writing. I don't, who needs any stinking graphics? I've got a Christian. I don't need a knife. I've got a donk. That's a that's a movie quote there. So let's talk about the ten things that we need to do to become a thought leader. The first one is to simply identify what you're passionate about and what you can gain expertise in. Choose a topic and start widening your knowledge of this. There's a, a quote, and I forget who said it, uh, but all you really need, I believe, is to read something in the order of three to five books on a, 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 certain, a certain or specific topic to become an expert in the field. 
so many people are out there talking about the things they do and have such little knowledge and in-depth insight to what they're talking about because of their ego or because they were just told to do something a certain way and they've done it so long that they think that they're an expert. They haven't widened their their mind and their their knowledge and their wisdom and their their intelligence about that. That if you just read three to five different books on that topic by different authors, you will have more insights and you become more of an expert than most people in your field. And I don't know about you, but I could read a book in maybe a month, a really read it really good, like very deep, maybe two months. So in a year, if I could read five to six books in a year, if I took two months to really, really get into these books on a level to where I can recall them, I would be an expert within one year. That's possible. But a bit, it should be something that you're passionate about because you're not going to do that and read all those books and get into all those rabbit holes if you're not passionate about it. So number one, identify a passion. Number two, don't be a regurgitator. Don't take those five books and just spit out lines from them and just repeat people and just use all these quotes. Develop your own personal perspective. Consider what sets your perspective apart from others. What insights and expertise do you have to offer? What history do you have? What lessons and more importantly, what stories you can share to relate to others? This becomes your perspective. Now, you can always quote from those books. You can pull from them. You can lean on them. You can learn from them. But don't identify with them. Create your own perspective. As you do that, that leads us to number three, which is what we're doing right here, right now. It's creating, hopefully, high-quality content. The content that we, uh, the business I am is in the intellectual property business uh, as a professional speaker as a platform owner for coaches my job is to create content is to create intellectual property that i share and hopefully gets absorbed and has impact and, and can further somebody's life uh in their body in their mind in their business and uh hopefully that happens enough times where they start thinking of me they start thinking of my platform they start paying me money to go speak on stages, to teach other people to do this thing that I'm I'm doing. I'm uh, hopefully passionate about it. That comes through, I hope. I definitely am passionate. I don't do things that I don't feel. That's, that's uh, just my personality. So as we're, we're doing this, cre creating this content, we have to then put it somewhere. I can't just create a content. Uh, so many people turn this thing right here on and record and go, boy, that's great content. Yeah, but it's not that good. It's great content, but I flubbed that line in the middle. Man, this is great content, but it's just an office behind me or it's just a wall. Uh, I'm just going to try again tomorrow. I say go big and go live. This is what we're doing right here. So create the content, but then create the online presence. That's number four, create the online presence. I go live because when I flub a word, if my office changes from day to day, if my background changes, I do something about it. I wear my branded shirt. I put my logo in the corner down here so that there is something because I don't have the green screen today. I don't have the, the done better coaching, done better studio behind me, but I've got my brand. I got my colors. I'm flying them. I'm representing, but I'm not letting these things stop me. I'm not letting my online presence be deterred because of a change in my circumstance. So every Monday through Thursday, I'm trying to build my online presence. It gives me three days off. It gives me Friday, Saturday, and Sunday to do other things. Is that enough? Maybe not. Maybe I need to do more. Is it too much? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe it's too much for some of you. But that's why there's different options, different places to go and look and different people to see. The next thing you want to do, number five, is be engaging to your audience. Whether I'm on stage or whether I'm on this live cast right now, I've got a couple people, Olga and Christian and my mother, uh, engaging right now, giving you feedback through their, through their feed live on here through the chat. After I'm gone and off the air, people are going to be leaving comments and watching this show later. But the questions I'm asking during this broadcast, they're going to see later and they're going to leave comments. So interact with your audience by uh, asking open-ended open con uh, questions. 
participating in discussions, seeking feedback. This helps your credibility, gives you authenticity, and helps you build trust. So engage your audience. That's number five. Number six, I did it yesterday. Uh, bring in others to help you. We brought in Carolyn Strauss to talk to us about what she's doing and about how she talks and speaks and the problems that she solves. And we've had fun. You saw the playfulness between us, the banter, the, the inside jokes. These are from collaborating and trusting others and not looking at people as competition, but as a community. So collaborating with others, building trust, giving them referrals, giving them props, giving them um, introductions to other people, this will grow your, your network. So collabor collaborating with other thought leaders in your industry will expand your reach and not constrict it. So that's number six. Number seven, going right back to coaching done better and why I have a infinity sign as my logo. logo. It's because we have to continuously learn to grow. We have to stay in tuned with the latest trends and developments in our field, continuously learning and growing in order to help stay relevant, to maintain that, lead, that thought leadership status. You don't become a thought leader and then that's it. You walk away, drop the mic, and you're a thought leader forever. It's something that has to, to be continuously hammered on and being in that public eye. Number eight is networking and building relationships. Building these relationships with others, influ be, having that influence on others, uh, lets you get exposed in your industry on your way up to that thought leadership, attending conferences, networking events, engaging in online communities, building this online community with people like, like Jimmy, Jimmy Shattuck, somebody I learned uh, to love a long time ago when he walked into my office in, uh, where was that? Uh, Addison, Texas, I think, Jimmy. Uh, building these these friendships that, that endure, uh, these relationships, it, it really, uh, says a lot about your character when you could have somebody like Jimmy Shaddix here chiming in on a show, but I don't know how many years after we met, but it's been a lot. Uh, it says a lot about you. It says a lot about me and, and what we feel about our community. So are you building those networks? Are you building those lasting relationships? Number nine, nobody, I don't think would ever accuse me of not being authentic. <laughs> I have, it's almost a fault of mine. You will know where you stand with me at all times. Being authentic and being consistent with your message, with what you want, with what you're trying to teach, with what you're trying to give, staying true to your values and beliefs and being consistent with your message. This is going to help you build a strong and loyal following. Don't be fake. Don't go for the trends. Don't jump from thing to thing. I have shiny object syndrome that is true but i try to jump to the bigger better brighter thing that's going to get my message to the masses and i've tried to woe that up with this platform that i've built in the speech that i'm writing so when i speak on stage and when i help grow this platform it's the only two things it's the same hub it's the same tire it's just that the spokes are those shiny objects that we're just trying to get the best things that really go together on that hub of speaking, on that wheel of the platform. And it's those spokes that connect the hub to the wheel that, that need to be there. So don't confuse switching lanes with trying to add things to get you across that, um, that finish line. Oh, just uh, thanks. You're welcome, Mama. My mother says thank you. <laughs> thank you, Ma, for giving me life so I could be here building these relationships. Um, and that was number nine, building consistency and authenticity. So number 10, finally, we're at the end of becoming a thought leader, is making and measuring that impact. It's really hard to do. Tracking the impact of thought leadership, it's, it's really difficult. 
it's it goes beyond measuring matrix but what are some of the things we can measure to find out if we are becoming a thought leader what are there some things that we can look at that mirror progress one of them is a website if you have a website looking at those metrics how many people are on your website how many people are going through your website did you know that there's a way to look at your website and it's kind of like color graph and you could tell how long somebody's on a portion of your website so if your website's really long the red hot red will be up top and as it gets lower it gets like cooler blue to black and then if somewhere in the middle there's something really engaging and it jumps up to red again and as you scroll down it becomes like orange and blue again and if there's something really good again it becomes red and then you can change those things on your website to get those maybe move something that's really hot down low up top maybe move something that's blue that you think is hot higher up so maybe you can see maybe they're just not making it down that far so there are things that you can work on on your website that tells you if you're being relevant or not you can look at your social media engagement how many views are you getting where are those views coming from look at the uh, age brackets of the people look at the comments that you're getting look at your viewership your subscriber base i mean these are all very easy things to measure but have you taken the time to do it what you pay attention to what you measure will grow and uh christian has put some stuff on here so i would definitely want to get to it as we land this plane uh look at this christian is just a giver right he's documenting all this stuff for us because i don't have my graphics but uh definitely uh, christian i appreciate you my buddy uh this guy has got a a, a podcast he's an oil man um plug if you want to christian your podcast as i'm landing this plane because I don't want to hit end without without singing your praises because you've you put so much right now into this uh for me i can't uh i can't tell you how much i appreciate you uh but christian's podcast it, he'll put the name of it hopefully in a second here um is um is something worth catching you could tell christian somebody with a big old heart and i've got a lot of those people in my life my toastmasters group my florida speakers association um the different groups that i belong to uh, who support me are, are awesome and that's one place you can go to to uh to build that network are the associations the cigar peg for for the uh speaking industry the cigar peg with ed ed rigsby and the, the i'm not even gonna start naming names of those that group because i'll leave too many people out but who are you hanging around that's where you're going Look at the people you're hanging around with. Are they thought leaders? Are they on that 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 ladder, that road to thought leader, or are they going the other way? That's what you're going to be in the next couple of years. Is exactly what you are hanging around. So thank you, bro, Christian. He's got a lot of funny names. <laughs> he, he's a he's a trip. But uh, if it's all about me, it's all about me. I'm ending the show. Don't say I didn't give you an opportunity. Check out Christian. There's his name. Google it. Find his find his podcast. Check him out. And uh, we will be back. What's today? Wednesday. We'll be back tomorrow. We've got one more day this week to put on a show. That's it for today. Let me find, because I love my theme music, as we go out. Be good, impact, influence, become a thought leader. All right, everybody. We will see you tomorrow.